Good morning. So this is Dr. Anand Shankar Raja. Today I'll be explaining about a very simple concept. It's called abstraction, mind mapping, and research questions. So if you ask me a question, who can do these techniques? The answer is very simple. You can do this technique for a PhD purpose or even for research articles. Uh, I'll start with a very simple example, which you can see on the screen. Uh, what do you observe from this picture? So if you can see very deeply, you can see two eyes, one nose, one lips. And finally, you conclude that this is a face of a portrait. So likewise, in research, if you go in depth about a concept, you get new ideas and you get new uh, research knowledge, which you can implement it in your personal research work. So initially, before starting, what do you mean by abstraction? I just give the operational definition for that. Uh, it's a quality of dealing with ideas. Simple example, I'll tell you. I have the habit of purchasing potatoes every day. I have the habit of purchasing potatoes every day. But unfortunately, I get ladies finger instead of potatoes. I get ladies finger instead of potatoes. So why do I get ladies finger instead of potatoes? This is a very simple example. So can you tell me different types of areas which can be seen from this example? Potatoes was not available. That is the reason why I prefer lady's finger. Why potato was not available? Because of a transportation problem. It's connected with supply chain management. I get lady's finger because I'm planning to be a fitness freak. Okay, so this is associated with nutritional dietetics. Eating a lot of potatoes would increase the memory power. If it increases the memory power, I can concentrate better in my work. If I concentrate better in my work, my emotions are balanced. It's connected with psychology. Or I eat potatoes every day. I'm not having a feeling to eat potatoes. So I want to change it to lady's finger, consumer behavior. So see here in this example, it's a simple example of potatoes and lady's finger, but how I have differentiated with different types of areas like supply chain management, consumer behavior, demand and supply related to economics and nutritional dietics. So likewise, take a very simple topic, simple area and start doing the abstraction. You can get different types of research ideas. Uh, first example, which I would like to quote here, you can read it on the screen. Uber eats Zomato, Swiggy, Delivery Boys. Taking up the job is good or bad. The reason is that most of the students in the age of 19 to 20 who finished their engineering degree, they go and work with Uber, Zomato and Swiggy. So, and they also earn 30,000 to 40,000 per month. Once if they see that money, they don't put their mind in enhancing the career progression. So is it good for the economy or is it bad for the economy is the question here. So I construct this table, which you can see on the screen. These delivery boys, they deliver stress at the end of the day. The health is spoiled. They get physically abused or they get mentally abused. And it leads to a lot of problems. So under stress, what would be the different types of aspects which I can connect? Job satisfaction I can study of delivery boys. Motivation I can study. Family issues I can study. The career progression I can study. Life lessons I can study. Under health, they are health is spoiled, physically they are spoiled, mental health is spoiled, it leads to depression. If you look into abuse and problems, SCM, supply chain management, it creates a lot of accidents. Theft is there sometimes, traffic problem is there, hygiene is there, delivery itself is a problem, timely delivery, a lot of criticism is there. Customer service, if it is not good, there is an impact on their incentives. That incentives, if it has a negative impact, then it reduces the job satisfaction. Obviously, it reduces the motivation. So see how you can connect the relationship between different variables here. So this is possible only if you do the abstraction. Uh, last night, I was reading an article. It was very interesting. It was on plant obsolescence. So I was thinking, what is this plant obsolescence about? So I went to Wikipedia, I just searched the meaning. Plant obsolescence is nothing, but it's a very simple concept. I, a producer, I produce a product in the market, but that product will be designed so that it is there in it, the durability of the product is only for three months or six months. After that, I have to go for a new product. Simple example is mobile phones, right? We have different types of versions or automobiles also, we have different types of versions. Uh, or technology also, we have different types of version. So this 
topic is very interesting for me, planned obsolescence, but in which particular domain I have to do is a bigger question mark. It's a big confusion for me. So I go to Google and again search in which industry you can see planned obsolescence in which industry. It shows automobile, FMCG, fashion also it shows. So I go to Google Scholar and I see what are all the different types of papers which are there. So what type of other tools which I can use? Why did I choose this plant obsolescence in fashion? I want to do it in fashion. If I'm going to do it in fashion, what would be the different areas which I can explore? Or what would be the different types of relationship which I can explore? So this is going to be my base paper. I have decided that this is going to be my base paper. How did I decide my base paper? I'm taking three important variables. One is sustainability, one is ethical appeal, and one is luxury brands. And overall, I want to do it in the fashion industry only. If I'm going to repeat the same variables here, it might not be innovative in my research. So I want to do something new. So can I do a mind mapping? Yes, I can do a mind mapping. What is mind mapping? It is brainstorming yourself to come out with different types of ideas. So I put fashion obsolescence here in the subject area and I put the other areas here. FMCG I can put or I can put fashion trend I can put here. Then I can put R&D here. I can put consumer behavior here or how fashion obsolescence is affecting the supply chain management i can place it here and the other sub variables like it so how do you use this mind mapping so you can put different types of symbols different types of images different types of colors and different types of weight also you can assign simple example i'll show you the concept which i've done this is the mind mapping which i've done so plant obsolescence is leading to fashion industry automobile industry fmcg industry but i've taken only fashion fashion also is further divided into fast fashion, trend, R&D, and resources. If you take R&D, it leads to new innovation. It increases the cost sometimes. Sometimes it becomes a failure. Sometimes it even controls the cost. So these are all the sub areas. Again, if you see here, sub area, in that sub area, again, some child areas are there. So it's very easy for you to scope your research work properly. Don't explore everything in research, especially for an article. For a PhD thesis, you can do. PhD thesis, it has to have different types of factors or different types of variables. So if you have to do a mind mapping, it is very easy for you to find in which areas you can do. Uh, so can mind mapping be used to frame research questions? Yes, it is used to frame research questions. Why research question? Research question is very important for any research to provide the proper solution. What to study? What were all the other researchers, what they have done? What would be the different types of important journals? Can I select a journal using research questions? Yes, I can. See, see, these are all the different types of questions which I have posted. So I'm going to take only this question. Is R&D an important factor which leads to planned obsolescence? So I'm taking this topic itself, this research question itself, I'm putting it in Google. So I get a lot of papers here. And one important paper that is planned obsolescence and the R&D decision from JSTOR. So this I read and I take it as my base paper. So even searching an article or scoping your research work, this, this can, I mean, can be done through uh, mind mapping. So mind mapping, abstraction, and research ideas are in a loop. They go hands on hands. I humbly request all the researchers to use such type of tools rather than just putting some theoretical framework which doesn't have meaning. Hope you all enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching.